today's podcast, I'm speaking to Jason Finch. He is a part of a photography team, husband, wife, photography team. Him and his wife, Ella, are out of Chicago. Um, Jason is a photojournalist who got a start at the American Red Cross in Washington, D.C., originally shooting sports photography. Jason came um, to the Red Cross and he became a social media manager. Uh, in today's podcast, we talked about how he got into photography, uh, what their latest photography and ventures are, and uh, how they are dabbling in video a little bit. I hope you find this conversation valuable and please enjoy. So Jason, how's it going today? Good. Yeah. So- so tell me a little bit about uh, your background and how did you get into photography? I got into photography, um, kind of always been into it as a kid, um, but professionally um, was when I first started working for the American Red Cross, um, was kind of a marketing person there and like a lot of nonprofits, you kind of wear a lot of hats and they needed a photographer to kind of go out and tell stories for the American Red Cross and and kind of how they were helping people. Um, And I had just recently bought a camera (laughs) and went out and just started taking photos. Awesome. Is that how you met your wife, Ella? No, actually, I met my wife. She thought it was a pickup line when I said I was a (laughs) photographer. She's like, oh, yeah. Um, But she said when she saw my gear... Um, she's like, Oh, you're an actual professional photographer. Oh, Um, he knows what he's doing. I can talk to him. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It's all about having a good camera, right? Right. (laughs) Yep. All Um, about the good camera. Definitely. Well, it's funny too, looking back when I, I get, it was like a Canon 40D, um, a nifty 50. And then my big purchase was I bought a 70 to 200. Oh, nice. Cause I I remember seeing, Oh, that's kind of like what the NFL sideline guys use. I want to try to use that. Yeah. Did you get into sports photography at all? Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, I shot just randomly through Craigslist of all places. Um, I found a connection to like the mixed martial arts community. Oh, nice! Like uh, jujitsu and, and stuff. Yeah, it was through um, a website that I think ESPN bought them. It was called Sure Dog. Okay. And they would cover kind of not so. They would cover like the UFC, but then they would also cover. Uh, like smaller mixed martial arts competitions and I they would send me out to different um, spots and I remember having to go shoot an event Um, I'd be right in front next to the cage uh, with guy it's funny because I had like my Canon 40D which was a good (laughs) camera but like for the light you got especially then was like what what uh, year are we talking about uh, probably like 2009 okay sure and Man, that was, you really learned how to like, it was a lot of spray and pray. Just like hold down your shutter and kind of like just just shoot as much as you can. Because a few of those fights, I remember, like one of them was like a six second fight. And everybody was like looking around at each other like, Did, who got it? Anybody get that? Because it was just, and I luckily I got it. Just, I you know, I'd rather be lucky than good yeah, and got right. the shot. Nice. Um, so I, I have a little bit different of a approach to photography i'm a bit more photojournalistic and my wife who i work with ella yeah um she's on a wedding day she's the one who kind of like she'll run the show a little bit more than i will and kind of direct <clears throat> the couples on kind of like posing and where to go um and i'm we're always kind of both shooting granted you know i can shoot i'll i'll direct the couple too um but she's a bit more of kind of she went to school for photography yeah, so. my wife doesn't work with me, but I've learned to keep our relationship and our marriage stable. You always take direction from the, the woman, definitely. <laughs> yeah, happy <laughs> wife, happy life. Yeah, exactly. Um, so are are you from the Chicago area? I know you're based out of Chicago, but uh, is that where you grew up or where did you grow up? I, I'm actually from like the Rockford, Illinois area, kind okay. of grew up there. Um, and that's where I started with the American Red Cross was the local chapter there. Um, and went out went out with the most common disaster that we would respond to for the american red cross if a lot of people don't know this is like single family house fires oh nice and it's where like a family you know their house is on fire and they have nowhere to go and that's when like firefighters would call the american red cross and be like hey can you help these people and 
you know, they would give them, you know, put them up in a hotel room, give them, you know, like, hey, you don't even have shoes right now. <laughs> yeah. We're going to give you shoes. And it was kind of my job to kind of to tell that story to people uh, kind of with my camera, showing kind of like the devastation mm. and then also people being helped at the same time. Did so, you get anything featured like nationally or anything like that? Some, some, a lot of local stuff, a lot of local paper stuff. Um, and then also during the kind of, we would call it kind of disaster season, usually during like hurricane season, yeah. I would actually go to Washington DC oh, cool. and I'd work on mostly the blog there. And I was kind of the main central contact for um, any media in the entire country that was looking for footage, looking for photos. I kind of help would, would coordinate that and I'd be like living in DC for a few months at a time. That's cool. So you're pretty, you're pretty experienced with, uh, photo journalistic, uh, skills. Uh, what is your, what is your process really on, um, the wedding day? I, I know you said, Ella said she does a lot of the, um, directing and, and everything, but are you just more there to capture in between stuff? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm definitely the person that comes in and, um, I, I kind of fade a bit more into the background and I'm taking photos as kind of a journalist, but I'm also at the same time, like if a groom is getting ready mm -hmm. and he's getting ready in a dark hallway with mixed light, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to tell like a groom or groom something like, Hey, why don't we go over to this yeah, right. pretty window and we're going to turn off all the lights. Cause I don't want to have mixed light in a photo and get ready over here. And then everybody act natural. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's not a club or, or, uh, someplace out on the street. You, you can control your environment and that, and that's our, those surroundings. Um, yeah. We kind of, yeah, direct the action, oh, but yeah, then, definitely. you know, let things happen kind of semi organically. Like we, like when we're posing couples, we like to have them kind of doing stuff, not necessarily like go in the corner and like yeah. make magic happen because, <laughs> You know, a majority of our couples are not professional models. And even Definitely. with professional models that we work with, you know, they need direction too. Yeah. They can't just stand there and look pretty. That's for sure. Yeah. You got to. <laughs> and then I, I like to do that too, because for people that are doing video, it's good to have motion yeah. things, people Definitely. doing stuff and interacting. Yeah. The, the video or the wedding we did, what, almost two years ago now? Yeah. It together? doesn't seem like that long oh, ago. Oh man. I know. Ed. Uh, I can't even remember where it was. <laughs> it was in a farm. What was that place I just called? Remember chickens and horses. Right? The horses were pretty cool, and that, that yeah. donkey was awesome too. My my second that got it. That was pretty cool. I didn't even uh -huh, didn't uh -huh. even notice that, but yeah, I, I I really enjoyed working with you guys. It felt very um, uh, no competition. You know what I mean? We were just there to do it. And actually when we were doing the, um, stuff beforehand, uh, before the ceremony, I actually kind of forgot that we had a ceremony to get ready for. And, mm -hmm. we, uh, Ella was like, oh yeah, we got to go do the ceremony now. And I'm like, oh, we got like five cameras to set up. Oh man. I completely forgot <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that. you know what I mean? Yeah. Your workflow for, yeah, that chapel well, was was very was like a yeah. I think a difficult setup because you didn't have you only had the center aisle. Oh, yeah. There was you no, couldn't, yeah. it was hard to go to the sides. Oh, man. Yeah, that was it. That was a challenge, challenging one. I, I um I know my second had to stand in the back with a monopod almost the entire time. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, how many weddings do you guys do per year? How far do you travel? Oh, uh, usually we do like twenty to twenty five weddings a year. Um, just to kind of keep ourselves fresh. Like we don't want to, like when we first started shooting, um, I think our first year we shot like 37 weddings and that was just a uh, marathon. How many years you've been doing weddings? Uh, full time. We've been doing it since for about eight years. Eight now. years. Nice. Yeah. So awesome. this is all we do and just to kind of keep ourselves fresh. And then we also have kind of another photography business in addition to weddings that we do like different kind of business stuff and lifestyle and models nice. and that kind of stuff. So cool. Cool. Um, and the, the main reason why I asked you to go onto the podcast with me today is I know you're dabbling in, in video. How's that going for you? Oh, it's, it's such a, it's a fun world to learn about. <laughs> um, it's a definitely a different workflow. Yes. Like I, I've always like, 
I always try to, whenever we're working with other videographers, try to make sure I give them enough time to set up things for like getting good audio and yeah. setting up different angles. And if like, you know, you're setting up a camera that it's just recording in one angle or making sure that we're all, you know, we, it's, it can be, like you said, it's a group effort and we can all work together. We can all get great yeah. shots. It's just really communication and yeah, learning like on a wedding day, for me, for video, the biggest difference was like, oh, wait, I got to go capture audio of all this stuff, too. <laughs> you know, that whole other thing you got to do now. That's with video always on is my like... mind. Is the audio is always on my mind. Like, is this good audio? Like, during the ceremony, there's nothing you can do. So it's just such a, it's such a awful, um, like a nightmare. But it's, but you're living it, <laughs> you know, it's, yeah, it just keeps just kinda... running through my head. Is that audio good? Is that audio good? Cause I can control the video, but I can't control that audio, you know? Yeah. And just have backups on backups yeah, on backups. Definitely. Yeah. So do you have any videos planned this year? Uh, we're, what we've been kind of offering to the couples that we book for photos, then they can add on video with us where I'll do video. Ella will kind of be the main photographer. Then we'll bring in a second. And then depending on what kind of coverage they'll book, we also bring in, like a second videographer as well. Cool. So for us, it's kind of fun to continue working together. We definitely know, I think we've shot now over 250 weddings together. So we definitely know where each other, where both of us are going to be. Yeah. Um, and then now adding in kind of video, you know, and Ella knows that, you know, capturing good audio is also crucial for video. Um, yeah. It, that That's a great uh, dynamic you have because you can kind of work, and set the pace for each other. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you're not worried about stepping on each other's toes because, you know, you have to keep her happy because when you go home, you have to deal with her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And like we both like the end product for our couples, we want it to be definitely. the best we yeah, can. Definitely. And, you know, it's, yeah, I just, you know, we've worked, we've been lucky to work with a lot of really great video people and, Whereas I think it's in the beginning when you, you know, say if you haven't worked with a, a videographer or if you have worked with a photographer, it's kind of like feeling out like, yeah. is this going to be kind of a competition or is this going to be like where we all can work together? We all can get the shots, you know, like we were shooting a wedding one time in New York City and it was kind of, it was a backyard wedding and they booked video last minute and just meeting the guy, nice videographer, but I noticed he didn't have that much gear and then all of a sudden, right before the, the wedding started, he goes up to the very front of the aisle, right, kind oh, of no. right in front of the groom's like mom. And the, we still had a few minutes to like be like, hey, what are you doing? And we, we were like, are you going to be here the whole time? He's like, oh, yeah. And I was like, what do you mean? Like the whole, like the entire ceremony, this is where you're going to be. He's like, yeah, this is where I'm going to be. I was like, you don't, can we both just shoot kind of back a little bit and like we can zoom in and get the shot that way? Cause he was just, he was just shooting it with like one camera and Pro probably he was a just, prime lens too. Yeah. <laughs> and it, well, he was a Canon shooter too. And we were like, Hey, do you want to use our 70 to 200 so you can get, you know, better angles? Like yeah. we'll let you use some of our lenses just so you're not in every single one of our photos. Yeah, right. But so he, he was out like there. he was like in the middle of the aisle like third, he was like in the view or something like that. He was no, he was in the very front. It was a really small wedding. I think there was probably maybe 45 50 people in attendance in kind of a backyard in Brooklyn. Oh, was he shooting it like backwards then? Like He was in the he was in the very front. Oh man. Front right. Kind of he would, so he could look back and get video and then he'd be right there for uh the rest of the ceremony. Oh. It's a so great, just, that's a great, da um, great position, but yeah, not to be there the entire time. That Yeah, no, yeah, like exactly. It's like we can, you can definitely shoot around that, like, you yeah. know, for kind of a processional. Yeah. Um, but like for the, so like every single wide shot he get he was in, he was in all of their photos. So <laughs> I was just like, okay, man. Yeah. And the, the area that we were in, that was so tight. I think I, I sat in the pew and yeah. um, I think Ellis stayed up front the entire time too, because there was no way she'd be able to get back. Um, oh yeah. That was, yeah. That same one. I think, um, I think you even rolled a camera for me. I don't remember, but the camera up in the balcony. Um, oh yeah. I, yeah, I yeah. either, I either asked you to roll it for me or make sure it was rolling or something like that. Yeah. I like made that. sure it was rolling when they, yeah. when they were actually going. Yeah. That, that kind of stuff. It's really great to, to find someone that, you know, has the best, 
products on their mind, you know, the, even though it's not your job and you weren't there to be, you know, paid for that, but you just was like, yeah, I can, I can look at that. That's not a problem. And the same oh, thing, sure. like for stills, you know, if a photographer misses a still or something, misses a photo and I have it, I've uh, helped them out that way too. I can, I can pull, um, I shoot a little bit, uh, some photos, mainly for my like thumbnail for mm -hmm. yeah. YouTube oh, or yeah. whatever. And I had a bride that, uh, there was one photo that her photographer missed. It was like on a bench or something. And I happened to use that as my, my, um, my thumbnail for YouTube. And she asked me if I had a, a decent picture of it. And I, I just happened to have a raw cause I was shooting in raw and I, I, I mm -hmm. it for her, you know, so, um, definitely there to do the same job and working for the same client you know that's oh yeah you even let me no, use no 24 yeah to, yeah when i, I shot that, that yeah. huge group photo you're like i got a 24 to 70 right here no and I was it was like, uh um it was uh 12 was oh yeah yeah 24 to 70 yeah that's i remember because it was the version two that's I was right like, yep. ooh, ooh, the new one yeah yeah i was using that mostly all day but i wanted a wider shot and i couldn't get it because my camera is a 16 millimeter sensor or super mm -hmm. 16 or whatever it is. And 24 is more like 35 ish or something. Yeah. yeah. And I had a, a EFS 12 to 18. So I was shooting that would, that was closer to like 16 to 20 or something. So that worked out for me. Good. Yeah, I remember that. I don't even have that lens anymore. That that's 16 to or 12 to 16 or whatever it was. 16, to mm -hmm. 18. but um, I use that 24 to 70 every day. <laughs> pretty much yeah that's a good go-to especially for video like super flexible flexible as far as capturing things and yeah definitely i recently picked up a um gh5 uh i like my panasonic it's it's really nice like especially for um stabilized video so majority of the day i'm just shooting on a monopod and mm -hmm. if i want to go handheld it's you almost it up. yeah it's almost as good as a gimbal pretty close like i shoot all the dancing with it and um i'll shoot a lot of the portrait session with it just walk around with it it's gear is getting so much better i mean i can't wait to see what that new panasonic um full frame is like oh i know right with like low light especially yeah definitely like that's that's the only drawback the autofocus and the low light on the gh5 is not great but um, just because of the sensor size yeah yeah uh, the micro four thirds and um, but the stable stabilization is great. And if you light a reception good enough, oh man, I, I love that. Love that camera. It's great. But I still got my cannons, um, all my, all my glass and stuff too. Um, yeah, that can be a big jump if you're switching entire systems over. Yeah. Yeah. I have an adapter and I can use my, my cannon mm -hmm. glass with it, but it's yeah that's more for like setting it on a tripod and pulling focus uh, manually yeah. you know um so do you have any advice that you would give to up-and-coming photographers uh st just starting out maybe i would say like we're for for new photographers one one place that i learned a lot was just youtube yeah just like definitely it is such a wealth of information whether you want to build a house or learn photography, you, it's probably on YouTube and someone is probably trying to yeah. learn or teach the exact same th same thing you're looking to do. Yeah, um, it, it's the number and, two search engine. Oh, for behind sure. Behind Google. It, it's, <laughs> yeah. If not number one now, probably. Because I'll go to Google and search something and it'll give me the site or whatever or directions on how to do it and it's like three pages long and i go i don't want to read all this so i'll just go to youtube and look it up you know and oh, for there's sure. a video of it it's awesome yeah i used a lot of youtube um places like Kel like uh scott kelby i learned a lot for like starting out like he had he had a i think he still had, i don't know how many volumes he's on now but like there was a good book series on just like really basic like camera operation things like you know, learning depth of field, learning yeah. kind of those really basic things. What does just F kind of, stop mean? <laughs> yeah. You know, like just starting out, like, you know, you want, you know, you want to get like a certain look. And you're like, I want to isolate my subject and I want the background to be really blurry. What do I do? Yeah. It's like, oh, well, this is what you do. Or this is like your options for gear. Like when I was starting out, I got like the, the nifty 50 and like, it's an inexpensive lens that goes, it's a really fast lens. Yeah. And it was like when I, it kind of clicked when I first saw it. I was like, oh, 
that's how everyone's getting kind of that blurry bokeh-iness right behind yeah. people. You shoot it really, you know, really low f-stop, shallow depth of field. You can isolate your subject. Yeah. Good. And especially good on a wedding day. Focus, yeah. Yeah, and a wedding day when you, you know, maybe you're not, you're shooting in an area that like you don't maybe want this background to be in focus. Right. Yeah. It's a, it's a nasty like sign or something behind them, but you yeah. can blow it out and it looks great. Yeah. It's like the light looks really pretty and you can just have this pretty bokeh behind them. The, the biggest thing for me when I started shooting with a DSLR um, for video mainly was I'm from a time when uh, I, I shot on a news camera. So you never used autofocus on a news camera. You would just zoom in to whatever your uh, longest focal length was, pull focus, and then zoom back out, and everything was in focus. There was no depth of field or anything. So that was really hard for me to get used to with a, um, a DSLR. That was the first thing I did when I got it. I zoomed all the way in, pulled focus, zoomed back out, and I'm like, why is everything out of focus? What's going on? <laughs> I couldn't yeah. figure it out. So I had to look that up. I'm like, oh, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> Mm-hmm, it was so hard yeah. for me to figure out that way. I'm sure, yeah, trusting that technology yeah. when you're used to just manually focusing. Yeah, yeah it was so hard. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to be shooting pictures. That's why I never wanted to shoot pictures because I'm like, how can I shoot photos of a wedding if I have to do everything manually? And then I started like looking into it. I'm like, oh, they don't do manual focus at all. It's all autofocus. And the autofocus is really good. You know, I was used to like – um just all that flat news look, like no depth of feel at all. And if you wanted to get a little creative, you could do it, but it was still nothing like it is now, you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. anything like that. Um, that and then also WPPI sure. starting out, especially going to that, like going to Vegas, love That's it or hate Vegas, right lo- now, actually. love or hate yeah. Vegas. Yeah. Um, it was, was a good way to like meet a lot of photographers, go see, you know, maybe you're not in your budget right now isn't for the latest and greatest gear, but you can go and see yeah. and try it and, and ask questions and figure stuff out. And then also um, another good, good thing that I have learned, got to learn through was like doing stylized shoots yes. for photo because it kind of helps you. You can network with other vendors. You can kind of figure out like a look that you want to get for photos. You can get an aesthetic that you want to capture yourself. Maybe it's like, you know, something that people aren't really doing in your area, but it's something you want to break into and go do. It's like, you got to show people that you can do it before you can actually go do it. Yeah. My, I've done a couple. Um, it's just so hard to coordinate with my schedule and kids and everything. Yeah. But yeah, those are always great to do off season. I, I did one last year and I think I did one year before too. And they're great. Um, do you have any, so let's say, I, I know you said you worked with a lot of videographers and you're doing video yourself. Do you have any advice to people that are doing video or any photographers that have never worked with a videographer? What, what pet peeves do you see? Um, I mean, we kind of touched on one where a guy was just standing in the in the front of the ceremony, but anything else like throughout the day that uh, is good or bad that you've seen working with a couple of videos? I would people? say it, it, yeah, it really all just breaks down to communication. Yep. It's like in the beginning of the day, you know, introduce yourself, say your name, be friendly, be <laughs> a nice person, um, and then kind of cord coordinating and telling people where you're going to be, ask them where they're going to be. And we can all get good shots. And, you know, if, you know, there are limitations to what you're doing as a photographer, let them know, like, well, actually, I really want to capture this here because of the light and tell people why you want to do stuff. Yeah. You know, because maybe if you're, if the videographer wants to do it one way, but um, in the photographer's mind, they want to do it a different way. And then you say, well, actually, if you look at the light over here, this is kind of why I wanted to do it this way. You know, you may be bringing, you know, you may be making that video even better or vice versa. You know, like if you have, if as a video person, if they have an idea for, you know, a shot, you know, we can all kind of build off of what each other do. Yeah, I stole your wife. I stole Ella's uh, idea um, when we did that wedding together. She ripped the bedspread off of the bed 
in the room mm-hmm. that we were at and she did her um all her details on it i'm like oh that's such a great idea natural light white bedspread it was perfect so i i've been starting to do that <laughs> at hotels when i do um yeah. photography it, it's, it's, it's great funny because like you can be doing this job for a long time and there's still little things oh, yeah. that you can pick up from everybody that you're working with you know and you know everybody can kind of like get better together yeah definitely yeah that's I talk with my business partner, Brandon, all the time. He was there with us, and he does DJ, and uh, we always stress communication with all the vendors, our, all our um, clients, and I, I try to reach out weeks in advance, sometimes months in advance, just to, to form that relationship and you know, so we know each other when we're going into it. Mm-hmm, for sure. So I guess... I don't have any other questions for you. <laughs> I kind of covered them all. Do you have anything else that you want to bring up? Anything that you want to plug um, that you're going to be doing? Any other projects you're working on? Uh, right now, if you just our Instagram is always a great spot cool. to find kind of new work that we're doing. It's just Studio Finch on Instagram or our website, studiofinch.com. Awesome. Are both good places to find kind of our wedding work. Awesome. awesome. So. All right, man. I'd like to uh, thank you for coming on. And uh, this has been a couple weeks in in the making and I'd like to do it again. If you uh, have time, any subjects you want to talk about, that'd be cool. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. 